It's an exhibit that honors the legacy of African-American filmmakers and actors from the dawn of cinema through that golden age and into the aftermath of the civil rights movement. And it's being shown at the Detroit Institute of Arts. And our, we have our next guest really to thank for that. Joining us via Zoom from the Detroit Institute of Arts is the curator of film, Elliot Wilhelm. Hi, Elliot. How are you? Hey, Todd, I am well. How about yourself? I'm doing well as well. Thanks for asking. Let's, let's start with the name of this exhibit. What's it called? It's called Regeneration, Black Cinema, 1898 through 1971. So the dates are very specific uh, because it tells a very specific story about movie history that a lot of people, including much of it myself, was not really aware of until I experienced this exhibition at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles a year ago. So you saw this and thought, boy, we really need to bring this to West Michigan. I'm assuming you're going to see plenty of on-screen things because we're talking about actors, African-American actors, but how much off-screen do we see? Well, actually, the exhibition is a, is a walkthrough experience. Uh, it's seven rooms depicting seven different stages of African-American engagement throughout the history of cinema. When you walk in, there is a large screen experience waiting for you at the entrance. It's two African-American vaudeville performers in 1898 who are playfully kissing and also doing a, a little bit of a dance uh, that they might have done in their vaudeville show in the, in the late 19th century. And what's remarkable about this film, in addition to it being uh, beautiful and joyous, is that it's actually a remake of a movie that Thomas Edison made two years previously in 1896 called The Kiss, uh, with two white studio workers in very similar pose, but here we have two African-Americans who are doing the same thing. And in a sense, it, it's a perfect setup for what the exhibition shows us in its entirety, which is African-Americans saying, we want to be in front of the camera. We want to be behind the camera. We want to be a part of this amazing new art form movies that so many people uh, want to, to want to see and want to be a part of. And the 75 or so years that the exhibition covers shows how that journey happened, including uh, all of the, the difficulties during that early phase of motion pictures in making their way through the studio system and thereby having to work in independent cinema. There were more than 150 independent uh, film companies around the United States, including one uh, in the Detroit area, right near the Detroit Institute of Arts. That was the, the Maurice Film Company in Detroit. And these companies were very, very, I wouldn't say poorly funded, but just to the bone funded. And they featured films that had all black casts in them. And these were shown in what was then largely a segregated industry. Movie theaters, certainly throughout the South, were segregated. There was whites only, and then there were African Americans only in either theater balconies, separate theaters, or separate show times. And since major studios wouldn't handle those independent films, they had to have a completely independent film distribution network as well. And the exhibition shows us all of this ingenuity and perseverance, and above all, the artistry that so many people don't know about because these films have not been widely seen, even in film history courses at universities um, and in museums of film history. Uh, a lot of this has largely been unknown. You know, we see people accepting awards today that want to thank those that paved the way for them. This exhibit really shows who those people are. Exactly right. Um, we meet a lot of those folks early on in the exhibition. Um, and, and that, as I say, was an area of, of strict segregation. But we see the folks who were in um, theater, uh, either on Broadway or in vaudeville or in, in musical theater of some kind, who eventually made their way onto the screen, either in these independent projects, and then eventually as sort of featured performers at, say, nightclubs or or dance halls or in special occasions in some of the major studio films by 20th Century Fox and MGM and so on. It also shows us the first um, black actor who won an Academy Award, 
that was Hattie McDaniel uh, playing a slave, Mammy, um, sort of a happy slave, which was the the whole way in which African Americans were cast in in that era in those subsidiary roles in which they were serving uh, the largely white cast. We see her acceptance speech for the Oscars. And what we don't see is that at the Oscars in 1939, Hattie McDaniel had to sit in a segregated section of the Academy ballroom that was hosting the event. It was in a big hotel. And it took her a while to get to the podium because she was not allowed to sit with the white cast members or the white technicians or the entire crew of Gone with the Wind. This was not over uh, in the 1930s segregation, not over in the 1940s. Uh, it took a while, step by step, we eventually get to Sidney Poitier's Oscar, which is part of the exhibition. He had loaned it to the exhibition some time ago um, for Lilies of the Field in 1964. And by the end of the exhibition, we see African-American directors and writers finally taking control of their own projects on a much larger scale. And it turns out to be an upbeat uh, kind of miraculous journey uh, and, and one that is still not over. And with the exhibition, we have a very robust program of, of complete feature films that are showing in our auditorium. Uh, and that's going to go on through the entire calendar year. The exhibition ends June 23rd. You know, so we have until June to get there. Elliot, obviously a lot to see. I mean, Louis Armstrong's horn there, Lena Horn's uh, stuff. You see right. Potsway, you, you heard about Sydney. Regeneration Black Cinema, 1898 to 1971. Fascinating. You could spend uh, days diving into this. Now through June 23rd, if you want more information, dia.org. Elliot, thank you again for the time this morning. My pleasure, Todd.